Welcome everyone, it's Lee here. It's wonderful to have you with me. Now I'm just laying down some copper ground, which is one of my favorite base coats. Uh, it leaves a nice slick surface and just a bit of bite to paint over. Makes it a little bit easier. Uh, the canvas is Belgian linen. Now this uh, painting will be a painting for my uncle. It's, this is his boat. He's been sailing for 60 years this year and it's just an incredible milestone. He's done many Sydney and Hobart yacht races which is world renowned, one of the toughest yacht races in the world. And I thought I'd start off by just doing a quick study of this uh, yacht, just in gauche. And I'd have to say I really enjoyed this. Uh, just knocking in a little study, just to get, get me an idea of the proportions of the boat and things like that. I do recommend doing this type of thing if you're doing anything like a major studio painting, just to know your subject inside and out. Now, this is a beautiful part of the world, this is Tasman Island, which is the turning point, I guess, to heading home to Hobart at the Sydney to Hobart Yacht Race. Now, I just love the look of these sort of rocks just jutting out of the ocean. It's pretty spectacular. So I've done the basic block in. It's really rough. It's just literally marking out where everything is on the painting. Everything will get painted over probably two or three times. And the main thing here in the sky is I want to keep the, the sky really sort of fluffy and muted sort of into the background and so it doesn't really take over the painting at all. Really just scrubbing in the first basic layers just to, just to build up a slight bit of texture. And we're just once again mapping out the, the cloud shapes. So the light's going to come from where you see this, this sort of uh, lighter mass just below where I'm scrubbing in here. And that will sort of just diagonally shoot across the uh, from the top left corner to the bottom right corner of the painting. So it's a good idea to establish your light path, I guess, across a painting to start with. And this really does help with um, setting out your painting. I've realised what am I doing here? I've, uh, I've picked up the wrong brush. I've started off with this brush just marking things in and and now I've got the right brush in my hand. I've got the uh, probably a medium mop brush and I use this exclusively for doing clouds and whatnot. I guess you're wondering why I'm rubbing and rubbing and rubbing the paint into the painting. Well, this sort of found to be almost the ideal way of building up clouds. So you, you get rid of all those sharp edges, but you're able to, to build up the mass uh, of a cloud quite well. It's almost like wet paint turns dry once you scrub it and scrub it and scrub it and scrub it and I've found this a brilliant way to, to do clouds. And I, and I won't make any apologies for doing real-time painting because without real-time painting, you're not gonna know how, how it actually gets done. Now, I'm not messing around at this stage. I just literally lay into it. Scrub, literally scrubbing paint right into the surface. As you can see, it really sort of melds them together and builds up a lot of depth in the in the clouds. As you can see here, sort of the top of the canvas will be darker, so that'll be the darker sort of mass of clouds, which will bring those forward towards the viewer. And obviously, this lower portion will be a little bit warmer where the sun sun is at the lowest there, and uh, that'll be further back. So you sort of get this sort of effect of, of the cloud sort of drifting over your head as, you, as you're viewing the painting. Now I know there's many ways to paint clouds. You can just lay straight paint and leave it and just literally blend lightly in as you go. But I really like this method. I think it really sort of lets the, lets the cloud sort of sit there lightly rather than be sort of really heavy looking with, with hard lines around the edges. And you find this process for a lot of the areas around the painting that I 
don't use a lot of thick paint down for a lot of the painting. Um, it's only when I build up a lot of textures over the top that you'll find that the top layers have a good amount of paint on them. So this isn't sped up at all, it's just me literally driving the paint into this canvas and look about, I've dropped the, dropped the brush. This happens a couple of times actually, I, you, you sort of whip it so fast that it just spins out of your hand. Once things get mainly established to how I sort of like the look of them, it, you know, I do, you know, uh, ease back a little bit in areas, uh, uh, just adding those little bits of highlights and little dark patches. And I guess like the beauty of acrylic paints is you can sort of work on an area, get that looking how you want to, but you can leave it, go to another area of the canvas only a few centimetres away, work on that. In 20 minutes time you can get back over that area you've just painted because it's dried so it's a much much faster way to paint I think. And I think um, over time I've sort of grown to appreciate the way that acrylic paintings look. They do look different, they're not the same, they don't have that sort of buttery glossy sort of look to them but I sort of like the sort of rougher scumbly sort of look sometimes. So I'm not far away from finishing up on the on the sky here and <laughs> there goes a brush again. Um, it's not uncommon for me to do that when I'm scrubbing in the skies. It's, it's <laughs> I've got all these brush marks scattered around the floor area. And this is what I was talking about where you can just go back over things quickly like if you've got a little bit of dark shadows I want to just lay in underneath this, this cloud base and you can just scrub it straight in over the top. So moving on now just to define a few little spots around these clouds just to make a bit more 3D looking. So it'll be a bit more lighter paint just to sharpen up the uh, the areas in light. That'll just give it a bit a touch more shape. Just add in the last few areas of, of sort of the most light in the in the clouds. This is where I'll keep the paint the most thickest, I guess, just on top. Just get rid of the harsh edge. Moving on to the rocks. Now, this is quite a long process. These sort of like columns of rocks jutting out of the water and I guess over time they've eroded sort of straight down so it's almost like a lot of little stacked columns sort of all sticking up out of the water uh, punched together and sort of made this very unique shape. This probably took a, a very long to build up the texture because what I'm actually doing here is adding the darks and lights and I'll, I'll be doing this for quite a few sessions dark and light, dark and light, sort of over the top and over the top because the more you add the layers over the top the more texture you get and you start getting rock texture. So you sort of just lay it down and leave it, you might rub over some of it to smooth a little bit more out and as you can hear it's still quite scratchy like acrylic paints they dry, I guess really dry if you know what I mean, the, the, the surface is quite sort of scratchy to paint over and obviously you can put thick paint over the top but the more you sort of scratch paint over it it allows you to, to make texture so all I'm thinking about now is yes I want to start to, to form the shape of the rock but I also want to just scrape paint over to build texture and once again acrylics allows me to do an area of the rock Go to one side of it, do that for a while, go back to the other side, build up over what I've just done, go back to the other side and you can you can spend, I can spend a two hour session just on this rock formation here and by the end of it you've built up quite a lot of layers over the top because the drying time is so much faster. This is just another layer of just random marks over the top of whatever's there. It doesn't matter at this point, I'm not trying to make too many rocks at this stage, it's literally just adding lines and creases in the canvas so when I go over it again it'll catch 
more paint and then I can start creating the rocks. Sort of see by those brush strokes they're starting to get sort of that rub texture on them. It's starting to look a little bit rockish just in those lighter marks. And that's because we're just scraping it across all the other layers underneath. Here I'm just moving around to the background now. Once again you, I might leave that rock formation for a while just to dry off so I'll just move straight into, into the background. This is quite an interesting part of the painting because I wanted this background to look, I guess, like there's a lot of sea mist and very light and atmospheric around these rocks. But you sort of have to give a slight bit of detail to them. You can't just let, leave them flat looking. So we'll be doing the virtually just adding light paint for where the light is hitting the rock face and a dark side where it's in shadow and that's literally the way I'm thinking of painting these cliff faces is you start to see over time that you, you just start to get a shape formed and think oh yeah it's starting to look a little bit like a cliff face or a, a, you know it's, it's a bit of a cliff jutting out from the rest of the rest of the background. I do apologise for the angle that horizon lines on uh, the camera set up on a 45 degree angle to my painting and it just ended up making this weird looking angle as I was painting but you know as I'm looking at this painting everything's perfectly level and, and flat it's just it's just my camera angle is a bit of an optical illusion here so I do apologise if that throws you off and makes the painting look a little bit weird as you can see I've just laying in a bit thicker paint here but I'm sort of just taking off a few of those edges that I'm leaving. I don't want too much texture in this back area. I want it to sort of feel a bit distant and I want it to feel distant and flat but have a few cliff faces jutting out if that makes any sense. Because uh, our eye, I guess I want the eye to be focused closer to that well when I get to paint the boat which is just right that tiny thing virtually underneath my arm the bottom right hand corner I've marked in the actual boat so this is way in the background uh, the rocks are next and then the boat and I think it's sort of at this stage you can start to see the shape of these cliff, cliffs form just building up these layers of light where the sun is hitting it on the on the face and the actually darker valleys the sun's behind the hill and I'm not trying to really make any particular rocks I'm just putting in sort of light brushes of paint and just let, leaving them just to make, uh, make a, a, a rock look but not too defined, this is way in the distance Just throw this photo up here and you can see what I'm trying to do. Like it sort of looks further back, but you can just see those lighter areas of hills jutting out and it gives you the impression of how rugged these cliff faces are. This section here, it's what I'm trying to achieve here. I found this one photo reference of just this rock, which I sort of really needed to, to nail this section of the painting. So I'm not directly copying it, but I'm taking a lot of cues from it. Yeah, so getting back to Frank's sailing history, he sailed around this island, and I spoke to Frank just before I painted this, and, uh, and I said, look, how many times have you been around Tasman Island? Because if a boat from Tasmania went to sail to Sydney or Hobart, obviously it has to go out that way and up to Sydney, sail there just a few weeks before, a couple of weeks before, and then obviously it sails back in the race to, to come home. So, yeah, and Frank's delivered plenty of boats for other sailors. He's taken boats up there for owners to, to sail back. Uh, it's countless, so he said he thinks he's been past this rock a hundred times, which is just amazing. I, I can't even fathom uh, that, that's, a, that's a lot of crossings, that's straight. 
And I guess this sort of gave me this huge incentive to really look into what what would actually what Frank would like as a painting. I could have just painted a painting of the boat and I could have got that looking really nice uh, as a big painting of the actual boat and I thought wouldn't it be nice to throw throw Frank's boat next to this sort of turning point heading home to Hobart which is his hometown and it sort of made more sense to me to do that but there was no photographic reference of this boat ever well I don't know if the boat's ever been down that way but this boat in particular that he owns now but I just wanted to put that boat in, into this scene and Tasmania is just such a, a the rugged coastlines of Tasmania are just fantastic Okay, so back to the painting, we've just started to look at doing some rock forming and I start doing these sort of rocks and then I'll probably glaze over them a couple of times and then I'll go back to actually defining rocks again and it's sort of this cycle, it takes quite a while to, to get these rocks really how I want them. I'm just feathering now. I'm using a dagger brush here, probably number four dagger or something like that. This has a knife edge, and you can just get so many different marks with it. these brushes. It's pretty well known. It's a very, very versatile brush. You can do thin lines to thick, wide scrapings. Uh, they're brilliant. Turn them upside down like like that, just to add a couple of marks in. So this left side of this rock face is obviously in light, so it's going to be quite um, sunlight. And this, that, that furthest rock on the left that just popped up, that's what I'm actually painting, that section of rock there. And it's really, as you can see, I'm just painting lines in because that's what it sort of looks like, these columns of rock. And in the water here, I'm just marking in this section of, uh, I guess this is where it's going to crash over this reef, this sort of reef just under the water here in, in this section and obviously the waves break over it and splash up onto the rocks sort of mark that that sort of area in once again look, the the sea gets painted over a couple of times right, more than that actually probably three or four times um, it has quite a lot of passes to get just the look I, I wanted. We're just starting to get a bit of shape on the left side of that, that rock face now. We want this section of the painting to come forward just a little from that background so it'll be just slightly darker in this area. Here we go, it's just a constant battle between light and dark here and it just continues throughout the whole time that we're doing these uh, rock, rock faces. Yeah, so there's no getting around building up texture and especially rock texture. It just takes a lot of passes to, to do this. Acrylic paints, uh, I use a thinner version. I, I prefer to paint with them. I, I don't like laying down thick paint with thick edges. I think it, it, it gets a bit sort of gloopy on the canvas, if you know what I mean. It sort of builds up too much uh, all at once, so I prefer the thinner paints just keep going over and over and, you, and I think it sort of allows you a bit finer detail because you're not certainly hammering the, the painting with paint. And we've moved on at this point and, and literally hours and hours of just running columns of, uh, of shadow and, and light basically to make these hills and as you can see I've started to shape that main part of Tasman Island and, and we've got the sky above it now. It's starting to take shape from this point on and there we go just to show you what stage it's at there. Now it's water time and just while we just start the water you can see that hazy bit of uh, sort of sea mist behind it and that's with the mop brush a very light very minimal bit of paint on the mop brush and we're just doing the same as the clouds we're really just rubbing it and scrubbing it in circles to make that 
sort of uh, over the top of our uh, cliffs and things. And we want to do all the sort of light edges of the cliffs where the sunlight hits the, the lighter parts of the cliff. It, it will show the sea mist more in that area. And doing these waves. Basically, the easiest way I can say of doing water like this or, or the, the sea, sea way, I guess, you start off with your colour of the, of the actual water itself, this sort of darker bluey colour. And it will sort of be slightly lighter at the back and slightly uh, darker at the front. That will give you the depth, depth of, of vision into, into the painting. And we're literally just painting highlights. So a couple of col more colours over the top. So there's a highlight and then a ref sky reflection colour. So you have water, sky reflection colour and highlight. And if you can keep a little bit of a, sharp, uh, a wave shape, you'll, you'll get the look you need. <laughs> At this point here, I'm, I tend to like absolutely stare at the painting when, when I'm doing intricate stuff. And it's not good for your eyes, I guess, you, without blinking, but you've got to concentrate, I guess. So I'm just building up this uh, rock splash against these rocks. Now you can see by the rocks, it's still not highly detailed at this point. We're just building up and building up to, to get to that final um, rock layer, I guess. But it's starting to have a bit more shape. As you can see, the, the light coming from the top left is going to highlight those tips of the waves. So that's always going to be the areas that you're going to put your highlights at the top of the wave. Uh, bottom of the wave is going to be your dark stuff and you've got to think if you if you look at a wave what part of the wave will reflect the sky at you and it's sort of the face of face of the wave so the top's going to be the highlight the the top sort of half of the wave is going to be a reflection and then the bottom half of the wave is going to be the actual wave color where you're looking down into the color of the water itself it's probably the best way to just to describe it but looking back at that horizon line the waves are so small you can hardly see them and they get bigger and bigger and there's obviously you can see more wave and more base of the wave as you come forward so there's a slightly cooler wave around the, the back side of this rock where it's not in in sunshine it's going to be a, a dark a, a sort of a more bluey muted color not light highlight color There's nothing like the finger just to, to spread out the paint a bit so it doesn't look so sharp. And once again, we're not really using any white paint yet. I haven't. I don't think I've hit the top of the valley range. It's not far away from from it at the, that rock face edge there, but we're we're literally just doing a. Obviously a light bluish colour for this, for some of the highlights, and it'll be white. It'll be really white in some areas that, that the waves are sort of slightly breaking or capped. Now, I know some people don't like painting acrylic paints. For you can probably hear it. That the reason that that we've got here is it's just it's very dry when you've got to paint over it with, with any sort of paint. And I'm not using lots. I want that, what do you call it, sort of scraped paint feeling for the for the sea. It makes it look like it's had a bit of wind rushing through it. So as you can see by the water here, we've got it basically marked in. It's not really well defined at this stage, but it's sort of marked out. And we've jumped into the boat and doing this shadow underneath it here. So I guess I'm a very cautious painter. I, I very slowly build up uh, what the, the actual what I'm painting. I guess so. I'm painting the boat, and, and I've already got a layer on the sail there, but I'm going over it with another layer. And these sails eventually turn black, but I'm just marking it out a bit more defined at the moment. This helps me check the shape without going too crazy and. 
You want to try and, I guess, anything with, with these sort of sharp edges, you want to try and keep those as you go along. Like you can, I can paint the sea, I do paint the sea state over the top of these waves a little bit as I'm painting the sea. But, you know, you do want to keep your shape of what the thing you're painting as you're going along. You don't want to make the edges too rough when, you, when you're doing things like this. And we're just throwing in some colour on this boat. Man, come on guys, paint the boat like red or something. This is very intricate, this is a pattern on this boat, but I think it looks pretty cool having it painted like that. And obviously the boat here is so small, I'm not going to get the name of the boat, Joint Custody, written on the side of it, but I'll, it'll, it'll be just in a few little black and white patches just to show it. The boat needs a keel, so we've added that in and we'll paint the water over it. You can sort of see the keel in this painting if you look closely enough. Uh, the water sort of just runs over it. Same with the rudder. Uh, you will see the rudder if you look closely enough. Which is at the back of the boat hanging down. Uh, and these people, man these people are small like you can see the size of my hand and my fingernail. The, these people are so small, it's a double zero round. I'm just trying to paint them. And it just took, this session took me hours, like literally hours. I, I had to really cull this section of the video because I, I think there was probably three hours of footage just painting people. We're not far away from the finish line, but we've just got to define the sails, give it some nice shape. And the water, I think I just went a little bit heavy with the wind with the water, so I, I, in the final reveal you'll see that I've just knocked back the water and smoothed it over ever so slightly to give it a more, I guess, calming feel, but still has a bit of power to it. Well, we're going to paint this mast and you can lean on acrylic paints, which is fantastic. It's already dried. Painting a straight line or a, a very fine line with paint is always difficult. Uh, it takes all your concentration to do this, just like painting all the people. They're so small. Even the, the sail numbers and everything like that painted on there and ropes and things, staunchings. It's all very difficult, but here we go. We're almost done. stoked how this turned out. Uh, I think it's got great colour harmony. The, the, there's enough sort of action in the water to make it sort of suit the, the ruggedness of the area and the boat with a bit of a splashing wave over the side of it. It's quite, quite nice. And I'm just super stoked to um, be able to give this to my uncle and to honour his 60 years of sailing is just something that I, I truly uh, sort of uh, wanted to do. And look, this is the most important part of painting is critiquing it. You have to critique your paint very, um, I guess, in depth when you finish to make sure that you go and sit at the easel next time you can actually get better and better and better. So this is my 15th painting ever so to get to a certain standard this is how I've actually achieved it and that's a beautiful frame from Wagner Frame Makers. Nice tassie oak. So here it is on reveal day and this was just amazing like giving it to my Uncle Frank and my Auntie Beth. It was just, just a wonderful day of all the, the crew of the boat and everyone there. And the, uh, the support for the painting was unbelievable. It was overwhelmed, it blew me away. So thanks for watching everyone. I totally appreciate it. And please consider subscribing and liking if you, if you did so. Thank you.
See you next time.